The franchise recap is on season 27, Battle of the Bloodlines. During December 15 to February 16, this season saw 30 cast members head to Turkey, then some to Germany for 13 episodes of family members battling for their share of $350,000. Three big evolutions here. First, fresh meat in the form of family members as partners. Second, mixed gender pairing. Some guy, guy, some girl, girl, some guy, girl. Third, format swap, pairs to teams to pairs throughout a season. All three of these things were huge, huge deals and massive evolutions for the franchise. On the storyline front, let's just talk about the biggest thing. This whole season, it's called Bloodlines. Half of the cast members are family members of vets or new rookies from the most recent seasons of Are You the One and Real World. And they really couldn't have done a worse job if they tried. If they were looking for some new faces the way they had with Fresh Meat 1 and Fresh Meat 2, where they did an incredible job, an insanely good job at bringing in new stars to the franchise and all people basically that had decent runs on the show or should have in some people's cases, this time they pretty much failed epically with the family members, any of them going on to be real characters, real memorable in any way on the challenge. Nicole, Nani's cousin, was the only one who really had an impact on the franchise. She would do four seasons and was a decently memorable character in some of those, if not all those seasons. Vince and Jamie are the only other ones that even come back a second time, and both of them only for that second time. One of those, Vince, eh, not that great to begin with. Jamie is fine, but and maybe should have done one or two more. Who knows? But ultimately, it's a swing and a miss as far as the entire format, the entire theme of the show goes. The big part of the cast, though, the one big win that the casting did make is the birth of Tony time. Tony's here, fresh off his epic season of the real world. I call it real world Chicago too. I know it was called skeletons or whatever it was actually called or X's explosion, whatever it was. It was great. He was great there. He was instantly great here too. His first couple episodes before he's medically evacuated from the game are super legendary. He hooks up with Christina night one. She has a boyfriend. He doesn't care. He then fights his own brother, Shane. They get in a pretty legitimate altercation. There's broken plates, all kinds of stuff. They're just giving a warning, I guess, maybe because they're teammates and siblings. And, you know, that's why I don't know. They're allowed to stay. Tony has a horrible fall onto the water. He thinks he's hurt his back. In fact, he has ruptured his spleen, as he would later learn after coming back to the house, denying medical attention, turning green, passing out, being rushed to the hospital for emergency emergency surgery. What a start to a challenge career. What a legend Tony is. As far as romance this season, few and far between. You're not going to find almost any in the one main romantic storyline was not super great to watch. And that was that originally Kara comes into the house. She is potentially still dating Abram, supposedly still dating Abram, but he is not there at the start. She maybe or maybe does not hook up in some way with Thomas on the back of the bus. Johnny Banana is carrying, I guess this could have been another evolution, the like handy cam that they started having once in a while. Bananas was carrying it. He filmed something, maybe thinks he sees something, says later on that he does see something, that these two have had some interaction on the bus. And then, of course, Abram comes in, which is an odd casting to begin with, that once Shane and Tony leave, that an OG, the likes of Abram, is an alternate for the season. I guess it makes more sense given him and Carr were still together at this point. And so maybe he's, you know, in the, in the mind of casting, of course. So he comes in those two. It's clear. Their relationship is super toxic. There is potentially some not great things going on outside of the show. Kara has talked about some of that publicly before you can search that out if you would like, but it is clearly not a good situation. We see her multiple times talking about how she would planning to break up with Abram and try to finally get out of this relationship. And so they're the only romantic tie this whole season. And it's, it's a tough watch a lot of the time competitively. No standout team necessarily. Cara and Jamie a little bit, and you know, mostly because they end up winning in strong fashion in the final. But the real thing is when they switch from pairs to teams, 
it's it's a big deal. It's a big evolution, and it's obviously one. If you've listened to me for a while, you know I don't love. I don't love all the format switching, and this one doesn't work well at all. First off, the one team, the red team, wins all six of the next dailies, and then the format is that whoever goes into the elimination, whoever loses, their bloodline goes home with them too, which we've seen again now a second time on Rider dies um, to some degree. You know your your teammate has to lose for you to actually go home during the team portion. It's kind of a mess. It doesn't work. And it leads to this lopsided middle section of the game that is very strange. And people are going home who haven't actually lost. They won the daily. It's a whole thing. The elimination games are pretty cool all season long. I will give it that. Not always the best matchups, but the games they play themselves are really, really fun. The standout is definitely Homewrecker, where you're put into a room. I forget who plays this one. Mike and someone else. I'm forgetting. And you have to destroy the room and break things into small enough pieces to slide them out the little slot window that you've got the most weight you get out of the room in a certain amount of time wins. We have seen this again at least one more time. I'm remembering Brad and Jody and Darrell and Janelle playing this. I think that was All-Stars 2, the final elimination. So some cool games, not always the best matchups, not the most competitive season. Other memorable moments to call out, Anissa and Kellyanne go at it verbally. Anissa has some arguments this season's for sure. And her and Kellyanne's in particular gets pretty nasty going both ways. Dario prematurely celebrates, which causes celebrates on behalf of Rafi, who is the one actually in elimination versus Mitch. Dario prematurely celebrates. It causes Rafi to slip and allows Mitch to get the win. He and Corey stay. They ultimately get second and Dario and Rafi, who were two of my favorites uh, of the new folks this season, end up going home. And Dario is probably the other standout of rookie from uh, a show that, you know, wasn't one of the, the, he was actually from, are you the one, but another rookie kind of standout that had a nice couple season run on the challenge CT and DM sister come in faith DM sister faith come in to honor DM. They demo a daily challenge and talk about what the challenge meant to DM, which was a big, big moment uh, coming off of the passing of DM not really expecting to see CT, not expecting to get this kind of, you know, uh, memory of DM thrown in here. They then, after that challenge, get to go out with the crew that night. It's a lovely moment. It's probably the best moment of the season, if we're being honest. Great, great to see. The Air Pockets Daily Challenge, where you have to swim down, I forget how many feet, 20 or 30 feet under the water to an empty fish tank to stick your head in and get air, and you have to do it in, t- in pairs Once the second person gets there, the first person can move. I didn't explain that very well, but it's epic. It's one of my favorite daily challenge designs ever. It looks incredible. It's at night in the water. It's unbelievable. And it's even made better because the duo that does it actually the best, the only really ones to get all the way through it and they fly through it is Bananas and Abram, who have had a good history, who are somewhat of rivals. And Abe certainly in this portion is, you know, his his mind is is elsewhere a lot of the time, shall we say. He is acting quite chaotic. And for those two to be in a little tank, 30 feet or whatever, down in the ocean a bunch of times over, they have a funny moment. Be like, how is this what's happening right now? The camera work down there is amazing too. It's unbelievable. It's one of my favorite moments of the season. CT and Zach come in as mercenary CT making his second appearance of this season. Thank goodness. Kara and Anissa in pole wrestle is an epic battle. Kara getting the win, sending her and Jamie to the final where her and cousin, one of the biggest memories of this season is just Kara saying cousin a thousand times. Her and cousin Jamie get the win and dominate in a final, which does have a really cool the old ex CIA building, supposedly CIA building, who knows, is a kind of cool setup and uh, location for the final. Jamie and Carr get the win. Look, they whiff on the family member casting, which blows the entire theme. I really don't like the format switching, and they even saying that they, this is a bad version of the format switching. Some of the biggest storylines, like the Kara Abe, are a little hard to watch, and it's overall just not the franchise's best. We had been on such a run, such a high, fresh meat to, to X's to just an unbelievable run of reality television greatness, and we were bound to have a misstep here or there, and this one was that misstep. It's going in the fine tier. The CT Faith moment and the one or two great eliminations and the one great daily really saved this from being almost in the we got worse tier here, but it stays in the fine tier. It gets a C plus. 
Thanks for watching. Tune in tomorrow for the next season, which is Rivals 3. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the upcoming Battle of the Eras coverage.